chilly again. 8 degrees though, it's the warmest day so far. Sure it'll be fine. Rain forecast though. Good. Can you see me alright? This is the final leg, folks, of what has been an exceptional couple of days up in Northumberland. Absolutely exceptional. I I was just thinking this morning when I was getting changed, I'm gonna have to come back because this place is uh, it's just beautiful. I love it up here. I absolutely love it up here. I mean, to do this route uh, justice, really, um, you need more than just a couple of days, but it's all I had. <laughs> so, you know, oh, you can do it. And as a rider's holiday, you know, as a place to just come and ride, then um, a couple of days is adequate. But to, you know, do some more exploring to really get into a place, uh, I would give it four days, I suppose. Yeah, even more, even more. There's so much to see on around the route. There's so many places to visit. You know, the towns that are on the route, uh, the villages, the coffee stops, obviously. There's so many places to go and visit. Um, yeah, it, it, you could come up here for a week as a holiday, you know, a proper holiday, and, and just love the place. Although, you know, if you're with your family, you're not likely to be on a bike, are you? It's quite clear at the moment. There's a sea over there, look. The North Sea. So, first stop this morning, uh, heading down towards Holy Island. I think we're going to be too early, though, because the tide's going to be in still, so... We'll head down there, see if we can get a coffee while we wait for uh, access to the causeway because it is tidal, so uh, yeah, we'll have to wait there. After that, we're going to head down the coast for a bit, down through sea houses, down towards Cresta, uh, and then we head back down past Corbridge, down to Crow something or other. So this morning, the route that we're going to take um, it is listed in Lonely Planet's top 50, 50, not 100, uh, it, top 50 routes to drive of the world. Uh, it's supposed to be that beautiful. So it's listed in Lonely Planet's top 50 rides of the world. Uh, so that goes from Lindisfarne, uh, down the coast until you get to An Alnwick. I'm not sure how you pronounce that either. Is it Anik or is it Alnwick? Anyway, to there. Caution, check crossing times. I think it's 7.30 and it's 7 o'clock now. I think that's when we can get across. Oh, there's deer in there. Look. Look at those. Boing. <laughs> oh, he's still running. Look at that. I always worry with those beasts as well that they're going to turn and try and cut out across in front of you. Oh, big hair there as well, look. Hair there, and another one there. Here's the seaside. And there's Holy Island over there. Keep the speed down just in case there's any more deer because uh, there's a high likelihood of there being more wildlife. Oh yeah, Causeway shut. Look, Causeway is closed at the moment. So it's a case of hanging on a bit. Definitely on its way out, but I don't want to ride through it. Uh, let's kind of look at the times. Uh, where are we? We're up this end. Oh, 12.10. Oh, God. 
How could I have been so far out with my guesstimation? We're up here. I thought it was seven-ish. So we're around here, 9.35. Oh God, I'm not waiting that long. Well, we're just going to have to get on with the route then. So, we're not visiting Holy Island. Oh well, this gives me a reason for coming back up here, doesn't it, at some point. Getting through there. Not till later. I was convinced that it was 7.30. Oh, look at you. That's an egret. Why don't I use P more often? It's so easy. Water's flowing quite fast across the road here. That tide is quite strong. I suppose if you had a tractor you could get across there quite easily. I, I haven't got a tractor obviously. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Don't know why I said that. Oh god he's off again. That's great. No one around. I'm here on my own in this great place just dicking about I think this episode is going to have to be called The Holy Island Misadventure the sky is beautiful isn't it bruised tangerine so there's Holy Island anyway <laughs> sorry I know completely balls this up take a picture of it so that you can at least go well that's where we should have gone but the dickhead the absolute numpty f***ed it up for us great so that's it then so we'll just press on I suppose you know you could always risk going across but a, I don't want the bike just plastered in salt water. And B, I'm unfamiliar with going across it anyway, so uh, it's not worth the effort, is it? It's not worth the risk, I mean, of uh, something going wrong halfway, falling in the sea. It is going, the tide's going out really quite rapidly. Look at the speed that it's moving at here. You can see the water flowing across. It is flowing from left to right really quite rapidly. The pull of that tide must be really strong. I mean, you'd be screwed if you fell in there, wouldn't you? Um, it's an impressive place this beautiful sky beautiful sky over there full of drama that I love that right so we're gonna, gonna just have to uh, get back on the route what I might do is uh, head somewhere for try and get some coffee somewhere then. There's a f that up. There we go. I've got a damn good reason for coming back up to this area. One of them is to go over there at some point. I can't believe, really, that uh, 
<laughs> I, I, I did check it, I did check it. So that's two bowls up this year. One was the uh, Kielder uh, Forest Ride, which I couldn't do because it's closed. And the second one is mistiming the causeway. Now, I looked online, maybe it was from a different year. That's what I'm just thinking, actually. Maybe it wasn't, you know, this current year. But I did check it before I came away and it said 7.30. Has anybody else gone across there when it's uh, when the tide's you know, on its way out or on its way in even? And you've taken a risk and made a dash across it. How did that end? Well, presumably if you're answering that question, it didn't end too badly for you, but let me know. still to uh, get through today on this route it is I tell you what it, 250 miles you'd think uh, that's not you know knock that over in a day yeah you could you could not if you're going to enjoy it though I, I had sort of day one uh, you can't really count that because really we should count it from Hexham I mean day one was the trip up here and then a little bit of the route and a little bit of exploring around the, the area down there in the south of the, uh, the route. Day two was the main day, that was yesterday. Uh, so that was heading south and then west and then round to the north, up round Kielder and then uh, northeast up to Berwick. That was quite a, a big day actually, there's a lot of riding in that hell of a lot of riding because you, you've got to bear in mind that the roads are much smaller uh, so they they do take a lot of riding they're not they're not roads that you can just get on and you know do 70 miles an hour and get to your destination really quickly but you don't want to do that anyway you just want to enjoy it as a rider's route it's just fabulous but I would count it if you could get up here for lunchtime day one like I did but then I didn't plan well I did plan it pretty well actually but I didn't plan to you know be covering part of the route on day one I, I just did part of the route but then on day two I went back simply because I knew that was going to be the longest day uh, and I wanted to take in probably two-thirds that was two-thirds of the route I'd say so today is the last third of that route from Berwick heading south uh, and we'll have completed the route by the time we get to Core Bridge. But there's a lot to see, I think, a lot to see. It's 7.25. Let's play the latest one from Adele. there. I'm 
sure how legal it is to park there. No parking on the piers. Just a quick browse up here, see what's problem is you can't get close to the sea. So it's a wee bit disappointing that there's just nowhere to nowhere to stop and just go and sit and have a coffee. Nice little place, Craster, but you need to get some benches for people to bloody sit on. I know there's some over there, but I can't park. So you'll make it illegal. So uneven as well that bloody bike could go over. drink my coffee. It was like it was actually, it's like someone had been listening to me. That was a nice little break. I was ready for that. Uh, just drank my coffee. Look at this view. It's just incredible. Absolutely stunning up here. Nearly catapulted myself over the handlebars trying to stop to get into this lay-by. Um, it's a pity that along that coast road I couldn't find anywhere where there was a bench overlooking the sea so I could just sit and you know, and that you could park at as well, you know, that was in not too far away because of the valuables on the bike. Um, so just so that you don't have to take everything off the bike when you stop. But yeah, there was nothing. There was absolutely nothing along that coast. Sorely missed a, a bench overlooking the sea. I like this one, I like this, just overlooking that view. Um, there was nothing, never mind. Anyway. We're uh, going to get back on, do a few more miles. So we're just uh, to the west of Alnwick now. I don't, how do you pronounce it? Alnwick? 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 Alnwick. I'm going with that.
Wolfhagen. Oh, there's a ruin down there, look. Ruined castle by the looks of it. Oh, there's a thing on the thing. A thing on the thing that tells you what the thing is. Castle and 11th century church down there. You see, this is why you need more time to come up and explore this area, because there are all these little hidden gems all over the place. And uh, in the time I'm doing this, I just haven't got the time to just keep stopping and going and exploring, which is a bloody shame. I'm going to scope out some more places and then I'm going to come and do this route again because I've enjoyed it so much. And to be honest, I don't really want to go home now. But on the route home we are and, uh, you know, work beckons, sadly. Yeah, it's definitely an area that I'm going to come back to. It's just been exceptional. I've enjoyed it far more than I thought I would. I, I thought, you know, when you, when you go on holiday in Britain, you just, well, I, I'm constantly surprised by what you can find in Britain. Um, and, and this place is top of the list now. Absolutely top of the list in England for me. It's been a proper eye-opener and just wonderful 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 place to visit i can't recommend it highly enough folks if you're planning a bit of a bike holiday get up here get up here if you know if you've not planned where you want to be or what where you want to go and you don't know where you want to go up here is just you will not be disappointed and I expect the plaudits from you when you've done it saying Jack you are absolutely right mate it's such a wonderful place I can't thank you enough I mean that's a start uh, you know gifts uh, all sorts of you know stuff like that basically you know not nothing too expensive I mean keep it keep it under you know 300 quid let's say three we'll put a cap on it 300 quid uh, gift wise um yeah that should just about cover it really i hear you swearing from here a few spits of wet stuff a bit in the visor not had any well, we had a little bit yesterday, but it was supposed to be raining this morning. That's why, hence the clear visor. I think it was still a wise decision to go clear visor today. I'm loving this little GoPro. This GoPro Mini 11 is uh, superb. Just turn it on, forget about it. That's it. It, ju it just runs and runs and runs. Unlike that... 360. Uh, it's caused me some major issues over the last few weeks, especially when I'm trying to do bike reviews and I'm watching the camera as much as I'm trying to watch the road and remember what I'm supposed to be saying about the bike. Um, yeah, not not good. So I've, I messaged Insta last night uh, on their technical support and I, I'd already been in contact with them about this issue and they gave me a number of things that I needed to do with it. I've done all of those things uh, and when it's off the bike, when you just bench test it, you know, you stick it on a tripod at home and just let it run, it works fine. Wow, look at this. Look at this. Why is that not marked on the map? It appears to have it on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> How weird is that? How can that be? It's actually on the wrong side of the map. It's bizarre. It's locked as well. So I kind of go in there. Look at that. What a stunning, stunning place. Yeah, it's definitely beginning the wet stuff now. Never mind. We're all wet 
proofed up. Gore-Tex to the hilt. Because uh, this is my 60th year on this planet. So my 60th birthday is in August. Again, keep gifts, you know, below 300 quid really. I, I find it a little bit embarrassing and it's a bit ostentatious, isn't it? Just spending money on someone like me. I mean, you can if you want, but I wouldn't recommend it because, uh, um, you know, I'm an ungrateful git at the best of times. But anyway, my wife is treating me to uh, a new Gore-Tex suit for my 60th uh, birthday because this one's getting a bit old and shabby and the seams on the legs are coming apart a bit down near the boots uh, so yeah she's gonna treat me to I've asked for the Risha Atlantic suit because this is Risha and I love it it's just really comfortable I do tend to get a bit of a damp bottom when it absolutely buckets down my bottom does get a little bit damp in these. I think it's just because of the pressure, you know, of your ass on the seat. Ooh, he's just going for it, isn't he? Drago, technology for life. Oh, he's picking the coffees up. So there he is, at the bakery, look. Priorities. Oh, I have been through here before. Came with my uh, with Mrs. Mogul. Came with Mrs. Mogul through here. Yeah, I do recognise this green bit in the middle. Lovely, isn't it? What a lovely place. What a lovely place. Good. Good. You get everything in. Yeah. Good. Pull off with the wrong indicator on. Keeps drivers on their toes, doesn't it? There's this twat going. Right, anyway, sit back, uh, enjoy a bit of music, and um, we'll ride on through the rain for a bit. Uh, I'll speak to you again when we're in an interesting bit. This is a bit nerve-wracking. <laughs> We're well into the cloud now, as you can see. It's concentrating hard on uh, following the route and hopefully nothing is going to come wanging around a bend without the lights on. All an adventure, is it not? Oh, my word. <laughs> really really am struggling. Just a case of taking your time. Got water inside the helmet. Inside the visor. I mean. Which is a bit of a bugger.
glad to get off that mountain <laughs> or big hill I don't think it's don't know whether it's classified as a mountain or not it certainly felt like it was a mountain this morning so this is Rookhope and this is my last village it is definitely my last village on the whole route so from yesterday we've done the whole loop I've enjoyed it so much I'd do it I'd happily do it again if I'd got the time I'd happily go and do the whole thing again go in the opposite direction I think next time right so that's it then folks that was the Northumberland 250 hope you've enjoyed that little series of videos if you have give us a like and a subscribe i'll see you on the next video i've been jack porter this has been a motor mogul channel and this has been the northumberland 250 i'll see you again soon guys thanks very much for coming